What's up, everybody? This is Miss Bull. I go by Hush Forte. Hey, man, what's up? It's your boy, Just John. Hey, I'm Savannah Christina. Hey, this is Strong the Poet. Hey, it's Serge. You're listening to Ballpoint. 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 Ballpoint with Blue Apple Poetry Podcast. Blue Apple Poetry Network. It's your boy, Just John, and this is Ballpoint with Blue Apple Poetry Podcast. I hope you guys have been enjoying this behind the scenes look at hashtag LTAB FLA 2021 so far. It's been an amazing experience just to see these awesome poets get, get up on the stage. Last Yesterday, actually, we had an awesome, awesome coaches slam competing for a, a coach's title. And that was an amazing experience watching these coaches battle and go head to head. And so we just want to give these special episodes out to you guys and just be a little bit more exclusive on what we're going to be promoting and pushing out for you all. So just so you guys know, we have our indie finals coming up. We will be dropping the top 10 poets on hashtag LTAB FLA on Monday at 2 p.m., right? So Monday at 2 p.m., you guys need to log on, check out this Ballpoint with Blue Apple Poetry podcast so you guys can get the exclusive on what 10 poets will be advancing to the indie finals on April 16th. Right. So with that being said, we have a couple events coming up. Yesterday, we had the Coaches Slam. Shout out to Miss Prosper representing Hollywood Hills for winning the trophy for the Coaches Slam. Awesome job. Um, April 10th is our semifinals. Our semifinals, we will be competing for not only team finals, but indie finals as well. So all those poets will be gathered in the space all day semifinals on April 10th. So make sure you guys check out the link. Make sure you guys follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Make sure you guys check out our YouTube live because we will be promoting all of our events right, though, right there on those pages, all right? Next up, we have April 12th, we have the town hall. So this, this is for all my advocates, all my poets, all of you guys have been getting up on stage and showcasing what you guys have, what you guys wanna talk about and just being a voice in the community. And so town hall is a great chance and opportunity for you guys to not only network with your peers and fellows, but not have to compete, right? Just have a conversation, talk about these poems we've been sharing, talk about your experience, right? Talk about your day-to-day, -day, your virtual experience. This is your chance to do that. And so the April 12th, we will have the town hall. Make sure you check that out. We have April 14th, the alumni open mic. That's gonna be amazing. I already know you guys are gonna tear off the roof with that one. That should be such an awesome experience. April 15th, we have the Amped Up Teaching Artist Showcase. Myself will be performing as well as some some of the most fire spitters in all of South Florida. We will be showcasing what we've done over the course of this year. Um, and then of course, as I said, April 16th is the Indie Finals. That will be virtual. So you could check out that on our YouTube Live. And April 17th at Florida Memorial University at the Lou Rawls Theater, we will be doing the Team Finals in person. So that should be an awesome experience. Hope you guys stay tuned for that as well. I wanted to talk today all about strategizing, right? Strategizing for semifinals and what that looks like. And so some poets may be showcase or getting ready, preparing for the indie finals. They have maybe three to four poems that they have to prepare for, not only memorize, but perform, whether it's on a video or it's in person. Um, and so teams as well, collaborating, maybe there's some tweaks, some edits, maybe you guys felt like there were some revisions that need to be made, right? And so we're going to talk all about not depending on the first draft of a poem, right? And so these competitions, we see it advance, we give them the opportunity to resubmit their poems as a video for the semifinals. Just like if we would in, in person, you know, in preliminary bouts, you get to compete and you see maybe this line didn't hit or you wanted to change it up, you have the opportunity to do that for semifinals and for finals, right? So we give them that opportunity to resubmit poems. With that being said, um, we see some poems maybe taken out. We see some poems maybe added in, some poets. We, we see some rearranging going on in some of these clubs. And so we wonder like, what is y'all strategy? How do you guys prepare for moments like these. And so I wanted to ask one of our Blue Apple alumni, all the way from Charles W. Flanagan, Isaac Bright. I mean, I don't know if anybody else does this, but I kind of just talk to people. Like mm -hmm. I, I around and I, I 
interact with different people um, who are going to be there or just my um, fellow teammates or anybody and say what what has been on your mind recently what has been what has been troubling you what's one thing that you think should be should be talked about because I can come up with my own opinions and my own assumptions but at the end of the day that is all in my mind and what I'm thinking may be something completely different from what the audience is thinking so if I go out and I get that audience perspective it can help mold what my piece should be about really what you talked about is really just gauging the atmosphere right reading the room um, figuring out what people are interested in, invested in, right? And um, sometimes, you know, during slams, you have people that may go in certain orders, like, right, word up, right? When you compete, you have a certain, like, snake order that you go first and to last. Strategizing when what piece works when is also feeling the atmosphere, right? If somebody does a love poem and you're like, oh, man, like, you know, the, the crowd wasn't feeling the, the vibe, you know, I'm not going to go in and then spit another love poem. It's kind of reading the room or reading the atmosphere and knowing when to choose what. Um, certain poems, certain slams, you have certain rules and criteria, obviously, that you submit your orders prior, but still knowing like these spaces, like you said, when you compete with each other in a team, knowing what poem can feed off the next poem or build up on the next, right? It's a build up. Every time I hear this school is going up next, I want to hear like it get better and better as it goes. Um, and so that was a great point. And yeah, this, this yeah. is awesome. I think you said some great things. Is there anything that you would tell anybody who's looking for any sort of advice, whether it's a coach, a poet, uh, uh, maybe a leader of an organization in this festival right now, that any advice you would give them as far as preparing for semifinal? Do not rely so heavily on the first draft, on the first try. Do not rely so heavily on that. Because as time progresses, you know, in the competition, so many things change. Like, I remember... Um, at the beginning of my, um, at the beginning of my poetry journey, you could say in, uh, 2018, I definitely wrote a lot more from experience. And of course I had other people to help me and that kind of helped mold me into the writer I am. But as I, as I excelled, uh, excelled in my writing, as I got better, mm -hmm. I was able to, I was able to write without having a personal experience. I was just able to use wordplay and make myself seem as if I was I was in that in that situation when I when I wasn't but that definitely hurt me in a sense because as as good as it as good as it was I realized that there is there's there's something missing there's a drive missing from all that and I realized that when I had a uh, uh, an, an old poem that I used for one L tab. It was during prelims, and because I was just having such a hard time just trying to figure out what I should do, so I was like, you know what, this poem already worked before. I'm sure it can work again. And I did perform it good. I performed it really good. But at the end of it, I just felt so unsatisfied. It just, mm. it just felt boring. It, just, it felt like there was no feeling. And then I was seeing all my all my other teammates and peers, and they were doing something. They were doing something that was really their performance felt more real felt more genuine right i couldn't figure it out and i was talking with one of my teammates and um i was like i just don't know what it is and then he said to me he said to me um well how did you write in the first place and then that took me back and i realized i had i had lost you know try i i had gotten caught up in trying to write such a great poem i forgot about the emotion behind it mm. and it goes back to relying on the first draft because when i was when i was writing all that and i was still having a hard time trying to figure out what am i going to do for l tab i was relying so much on this rough draft because it was the way that i wrote it i felt somewhat confident about it but i had no idea that it was going to completely change the piece i was originally going to do for uh l tab 2019 it was just a poem about you know about me being about me being sick, about you know what it's what it's like to be in that position because I felt like it wasn't being talked about enough. Mm -hmm. Then it just didn't feel that genuine because it wasn't something I that I, at least something intense that I had to go through. And so then with some with some trial and error and then some more trial and error and then some more trial and error, I um I was ended up talking with another one of my teammates and then I was just trying to figure out what can I do? What, what can connect to me? And then 
he, uh, my teammate, he said to me, what about heart rate? And I was like, well, I haven't done any of those in a while. I haven't mm-hmm. really how that could do anything. And he's like, well, just throw in something random like TV. And then that's how I got the inspiration for Click. I love the power of the remote. The power to switch to something completely different with a simple click. I saw the cutest girl in sixth grade. I was the Urkel to her Laura. Every time she would smile at me, my heart would beat like a jackhammer. TV taught me a lot, but I didn't notice how often I switched to completely different emotions. Click. I switched to immediate anxiety. Will she like me? Will she like me? Click. Switched to my cool, suave persona. Said, how you doing? Only to catch you a few moments later. Fast forward. I turn up my volume enough to say hi. And let me tell you, my first date would have been amazing. All right. Awesome. That was great advice, Isaac. I remember my first time when I performed on team final stage. I'll never forget it. Miss Clarington is my witness. I wrote a whole poem dedicated just for this team finals where I was going to shout out names and I was going to kind of name drop some lines and some bars that I had heard over the course of LTAB, right? It's just a reaction poem, really something that... Um, wasn't so much about my experience, but just more so I knew I was going to shock the crowd, right, with this poem. And um, I was reciting it, reciting it. I remembered it. I memorized it. And so Miss Miss Clarington was like, okay, this is your chance to shine. I was the first poet in the first round to go up for my team. And when I got up on stage, I changed up. <laughs> I ended up doing a whole different poem. And for me, it was an it was a it was a open an eye opener for me because I had the opportunity to do that piece, but I resorted back to another poem that I had that I felt more comfortable with right there on the moment, right? And all my team was like, man, like, you know, they were like excited and cheering for me, but they were like, yo, why, like, what happened? Like, you know, why did you switch? And I, you know, and and that experience for me was humbling because I was like, man, um, that I didn't connect with that piece. I didn't have an experience with that piece that I felt personal about that when I got up on stage, my passion was gonna show. It was just sort of me trying to wow the crowd, if you will, and try to get tens, right? But the point is not about the points, right? The point is about the poetry. And so when I got up on that stage and I switched back to my poem that I really felt passionate about, I felt good after it, right? And I think that's kind of what Isaac was getting at in, in some of his statements. Um, And so remember why you write these poems, right? R- regardless of the scores you're getting, regardless of the, of the, the placements you get in bouts, regardless of what you end up doing in this competition, remember that the point is not the points. The point is the poetry and it always will be, right? And so with that being said, we have some awesome events, again, that you guys should check out. We have the town hall. We have semifinals April 10th, all day from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. will be the start of the last bout. So make sure you guys check those out. Make sure you guys are staying tuned with that. We have the town hall on April 12th. We have the alumni open mic April 14th. We have the Amped Up Teaching Artist Showcase April 15th. Indie Finals Virtual April 16th. And Team Finals at Florida Memorial Lou Rawls Theater April 17th. So make sure you guys check out out all our events and stay tuned with the exclusive only on ballpoint with blue apple poetry podcast i'm your host for today just john signing off